Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to manually fail over SQL Server Availability Group in Linux CentOS 7. In my previous video, when I wanted to accomplish the same thing, what I did was stop the clustering services on one of the node and everything failed over to the other node. However, that is not recommended or good way to check uh, the failover of SQL Server Availability Group. We wanted to do the same thing like we do when we connect uh, with the Windows clustering and uh, using SQL Server Management Studio. And uh, we have graphic user interface up there and we right click on that and select the node and fail over to our selected node. However, in Linux, that facility is not there. Uh, the failover, uh, if we right click on the availability group and uh, when SQL Server is installed in um, Linux, the failover option is grayed out. So we have to go back to Linux and failover uh, manually and run some command uh, on Linux side in order to failover. So before we do that, let's talk about uh, constraint. There are different type of constraints and we will uh, correlate that with Windows um, clustering services. First one right here is location constraint. This is equivalent to the uh, preferred node setting in uh, SQL Server um, if we have SQL Server uh, availability group set up on Windows clustering. Uh, and ordering constraint is the dependency, like in uh, Windows clustering services, if the dependency is defined that this IP address needs to come online first and then resource can come online, that's exactly is defined in ordering constraint. And location constraint, again, that is preferred node setting in Windows uh, clustering services. We will run a simple command to fail over from one node to another node in the second step. And what it does is when we initiate the manual failover like this, it creates a constraint on the target node. For example, if node one is my primary um, replica for my availability group right now, and I wanted to fail over to the secondary replica node two, then it'll on the node two, it will create a constraint that that might be my preferred node. So in, if we wanted to fail back again to node one, it's recommended that you remove the location constraint. Uh, if something happens to pacemaker or the cluster, it will try to go back to its preferred node. So uh, for the successful failover, uh, we need to remove that constraint and we will take a look on that. So let's go um, take a look on the Linux side. First of all, if you are connected with the uh, SQL Server that is installed on Linux using SQL Server Management Studio and high availability is all set up, you can take a look right now that where um, your um, availability group is. Right now, as you can see, the node one is my secondary replica. Let's connect with node two and expand that and it'll show us that this is the primary replica, as you can see. So this is one way to look at which one is your current uh, primary and secondary. So let's go back on Linux and see um, using some commands. So the first one, we can run these commands on basically any of these nodes. So let's go ahead and run on primary node. So if you run this command PCS status, it'll tell you that where exactly is uh, the our availability group is. So if you notice right here, TBS Linux RG means resource group dash master TBS RG right here. The master node is TBS Linux 2. The slave node is TBS Linux 1. What it means in Windows, this is the secondary rep, uh, for, uh, primary replica. This is the secondary replica. So let's go ahead and take a look on the constraint, whether it has created any constraint. We have to, if we, if there is a constraint on node two, that is a preferred node, then we have to remove that constraint. So let's take a look on the virtual IP constraint. We're not concerned about ordering constraint uh, right here is, is okay. Um, and there is no constraint on the target node where it's running because I've been failing it back and forth. So I just want to make sure that there is no constraint that is it, that available. This availability group uh, has a preferred node. 
So let's go and run this command to failover first, and then we'll look at the constraints again to see that whether that constraint is created that, okay, maybe my target node is going to be my preferred um, node. So let's, in my case, it's going to be node one because node two is primary. So let's fail over to node one. Refresh that and see it's resolving. It's gonna take a minute or two. And let's right click and refresh this one. Now it has become primary. Refresh this. Still resolving. We can go back up here and look at the status again to see if everything has come online. Oh, sorry, PCS status. Right now is still it's saying failed, but it's, it's taking time. Let me go ahead and refresh that. Now, as you can see that it has become secondary. Everything is looking good. It took just a minute. So let's go back and look at the status again. All right, so now if you we look at the TBS resource right here, TBS Linux master, the master has become node one and the slave TBS node two has become slave. That means primary and secondary in Windows world. So let's check the constraints again, whether it has created any constraints or not. So we'll look at the full list again. If you notice right here, it has created the constraint. Now it thinks that TBS node one basically is its is, uh, preferred node. If we wanted to have successful failover and if something happened to this cluster, it's gonna look for a preferred node. So if we wanted to have like, okay, we wanted to go back to uh, node node two. And um, after the timing set, right now my score is infinity right here, but uh, if there is a timing set like in 10 minutes, it's gonna run on uh, node one, then it, it should go back to its preferred node. Then I have to remove this constraint if I wanted to keep it running on node one. So how do we, Remove the constraint right here is the command. So if we run this command, that means PCS constraint remove CLI preferred. This is the ID of the constraint. If you notice right here is the ID of the constraint. In previous, what we did was when we moved, I had PCS resource move. TBS, this is the resource name right here. And this is the target node that where I want to move this to and then dash dash master. So let's remove the constraint. And let's take a look on the constraint again, if that's gone. All right, if you notice that the constraint is gone from the list right here, we notice there's no constraint. We can go ahead and move the resources back to node one. We can do it right now, or you can play with this, with this later, and I hope it helps.